Welcome to Lecture Online, and here is a very interesting calorimetry problem for us, one in which we do not know the final state. However, my suspicion is, and let me explain the problem first, that uh, we start out with uh, a bucket of water, 5 liters, which is equal to 5 kilograms of water, 20 degrees centigrade. We put into that bucket of water 100 grams of steam at 100 degrees centigrade, and also a block of ice, 5 kilograms of ice at minus 20 degrees centigrade. And I'm assuming that in the end, we're going to have an ice water mixture. And so part of the ice will have been melted, but not all of it. And the question then would be, what is the fraction of the ice that's remaining of the original amount? How much of the five kilograms of ice will be left? That's going to be the assumption now. The assumption could be wrong. It could be that none of the ice was melted, although that's very unlikely. It could also be that all the ice was melted and that the final temperature of the mixture is somewhere between zero and 20 degrees centigrade. If that's the case, and we're looking for F, then we're going to get a value for F that's not between 0 and 1. We would expect a value between 0 and 1. And so if our assumption is wrong, we might get a value of F that is negative, or we might get a value for F that is greater than 1. If we did, we know that our assumption was wrong, then we'll have to make a new assumption and undo the problem again. <clears throat> but at least in this case, I think our assumption is correct, so let's go ahead and work it out, and let's look for the fraction of the i's that still will be remaining at the end. Just like in every other calorimetry problem, we're going to start out by saying that Q gained equals Q lost. So what is gaining heat in this case? Well, I would say the ice is gaining heat to get up to zero degrees centigrade, and then the ice is gaining heat again so that part of the ice will be melted. So on the left side of the equation, we end up with an MC delta T for the ice to go from minus 20 to zero, plus the fraction of the mass of the ice that smelt times the latent heat of fusion. So that's how the equation is slightly different. Instead of having m L sub f, here we're going to have the fraction of the, of the mass that's melting times the latent heat of fusion, and f will be a number between 0 and 1. So that's going to be equal to all the things that are losing heat. So first of all, the steam is losing heat by turning into water, so it would be m times the latent heat of vaporization, plus when the, the, the water that's, that came from the steam then goes completely to zero degrees. Remember, we're assuming at the end it's going to be water-ice mixture, so we can then say that this is going to be equal to mc delta t for the hot water, and that's how we distinguish which water we're talking about. It's a hot water because it came from the steam, and then we have to have an mc delta t for the regular water in the bucket. We can call it cold water, but we don't have to. We can just say plus mc delta t for the water in the bucket. So that's how we differentiate about which water we're talking about. Okay, I think we're good now. We have enough terms on both sides. It's the ice that's gaining heat by going down to zero and then by partially melting, and it's the steam that's losing heat by first condensing and then going down to zero degrees, and then the water is losing heat by going from 20 to zero. All right, the next step would be to find what the delta t's are. Remember, each term on both sides of the equation must be a positive quantity. So here we have mc of the i's times the delta t, since it goes from minus 20 to 0, it has to be positive quantity. This will be 20 centigrade degrees, plus the fraction times ml sub f, so that doesn't change, equals ml sub v, that doesn't change, plus the mass of the hot water, times C, so MC of the hot water, times the change in the temperature. And since it goes from 100 to 0, that would be 100 centigrade degrees, so times 100, plus MC of the cold water, times the change in the temperature. And since we think the final temperature will be 0, the change here will also be 20 centigrade degrees. All right. So now what are we doing? We're solving for f. So keep in mind that ultimately we want to know what this number is equal to. So what we have to do next is move this term to the other side. So we're going to take this one right here and move it to the other side. And so that becomes minus mc of the i's times 20. And finally, we're going to divide both sides by the m l sub f. So I'm going to rewrite it so that it makes it a little clearer. So we have f is equal to m l sub v plus 100 m c of the hot water, hot H2O, plus 20 m c of the H2O in the bucket, and then minus 20 m c of the ice, and then take the whole thing 
and divided by the m l sub f, m l sub f. That was, that's the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion for ice. And I think I have enough room down there so I can now plug in what those numbers are equal to. So f is equal to, and again, I'm expecting a number between 0 and 1. So the mass of the steam, which is 100, times the latent heat of vaporization, which is 540, 540 calories per gram, plus 100, times the mass of the hot water, that would be still 100, times C of water, which is 1, plus 20, times the mass of the cold water, which is 5,000 grams, times C, which is 1, minus 20, times the mass of the ice, which is also 5,000 grams, times C of the ice, which is 0 0.5, and take the whole thing and divide it by the mass of the ice, which is 5,000, times the latent heat of fusion, which is 80. All right. Now, let's see here. Uh, every term has at least two zeros. So what I'm going to do now is at least divide every term by 100. So divide this by 100, divide that term by 100, divide this term by 100, divide this term by 100, and divide this term by 100. So that makes things a little bit simpler. Can we divide things a little bit more? Are there still zeros there? Yes, there are. So I'm going to get rid of one zero here, and one zero there, and one zero here, and one zero there, and one zero there. All right, now I think I can rewrite this equation with some smaller numbers. So the fraction is equal to, I have 54 plus 10 plus 2 times 50, that's 100. And then we have minus 2 times 0.5, that's minus 1, times 50, which is minus 50. And divide the whole thing by 50 times 8, which is 400. And uh, 54 minus 50, I can go ahead and say that's equal to 4. And so then I have the fraction is equal to 114 divided by 400. Now that's a good sign, because that means that that's somewhere between 0 and 1, so my assumption was correct. And uh, so we have 114 divided by 400, and that would be 0 0.285. So the fraction is equal to 0 0.285, which is 28.5%. So what that means is that we have figured out that 28.5% of that block of ice will have melted. The rest will still be in the form of ice at 0 degrees centigrade, floating around in the mixture of, of uh, water at 0 degrees centigrade. Again. In conclusion, we have a bucket of water, some steam, some ice, we'll put it all together. We have to assume that not all the ice is going to melt, so we're looking for the fraction of the ice remaining. We write Q gain equals Q loss. What's gaining, of course, is the ice. First, to get down from minus 20, or to get up, I should say, from minus 20 to zero. And then the next time is for a fraction of the ice to melt. And that equals the heat lost by the steam when it condenses, the heat lost from the water that's now at 100 degrees centigrade to come all the way down to 0 degrees centigrade, and the heat lost due to the water in here going from 20 to 0. We set that equal to each other, and then we solve for F. And that's how you solve a problem like that.